Okay, we're in the book of Romans, chapter 1. Romans 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonour their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed for ever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient. <clears throat> Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. We're picking up from verse 29, malignity. Malignity. Malign, M-A-L-I-G-N malign, evil in nature or effect evil in nature or effect malignity evil in nature are you evil in your attitude some people are evil characters 
a lot more evil than other people? Are you an evil character? There are some people who are out and out evil, wanting to hurt and harm others in any way possible. Christians, of course, shouldn't be like that at all, but there are certainly some Christians that have an evil tendency to want to harm others. We'll talk about that a little bit later, hopefully in this study. But malignity, evil in nature. All the people you meet, isn't it amazing that some are seem, you know, normal, okay, run-of-the-mill, everyday, average people, and there's others who are blatantly evil. How come some people can be so wicked, so intensely wicked? We think about these dictators, you know, the Hitlers, the Stalins, the Lenins, the Mussolini, all these people that were so evil. How can people be so evil? Malignity. There's been a, another massacre, isn't there, in Syria yesterday, I think it was. 250 people, government troops just going in and just killing all these people, raping, killing children. How can people be so evil? How do you get to that stage? What are you feeding on? Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity. <coughs> Certainly, other characters, uh, you know, the character traits of this world today. All those things. Has it always been like this? Maybe. I haven't been around. But it's certainly intense today, isn't it? For about 50 years, 100 years, 1,000 years. The time of the Lord, were they as bad as they are today? People say, oh, they've always been this bad. It's just that, you know, it's promoted much more. It's televised. But there's an... I said something, um, again, I won't... Um, put this on CD but I said um, something the other week you know how bad does it have to get before the Lord comes back you know at the time of Lot and at the time of Noah what they were doing you know the gang rapes and the sodomites and all this kind of stuff you know there's, there's horrendous things in the scriptures you know that but how bad does it have to get and I mentioned something and then Yesterday I read about it. I couldn't believe it. And it's promoted on television. It's just that we're in a dire situation. You know, I can't think of anything worse. And yet, it's on television. It's, it's in the front of people. They're watching it, they're feeding on it. I tell you, it's out of control. What's the next? Whispers? Backbiters, whisperers, backbiters. These are various degrees of gossip. Whisperers and backbiters. Various degrees of gossip. And do you know someone who isn't a gossip? Do you know someone that doesn't get interested in other people's affairs, whispering and backbiting? If they don't do it much, they like listening to it. Are you like that? Nosy in other people's affairs? Talking about people behind their back? Who doesn't? Do you? Who doesn't talk behind the back of others? You shouldn't do. This is a list of sins. You shouldn't talk behind people's backs. It's pathetic. It's childish. It's disrespectful. It's futile. It's of no use. It's pointless. What do you gain? What is the point of it? Something happens to somebody, you can't wait to tell somebody else. 
And we see it all the time. Even within ourselves, it's a horrible thing, yet it rears its ugly head. Something bad happens, you want to tell somebody else. Some people can't wait to tell other people the bad news about somebody else. Again, only yesterday, you know, somebody has gone through a divorce, you know, quite famous, well, I say quite famous, you know, quite well known in the, a certain industry, and she's gone through a divorce with her husband, she's got drunk, she's trying to drown her sorrows, she's gone into a state of depression, she can't cope with life, she's driving, she hits another person, she kills them. Somebody couldn't wait to tell me that yesterday. What is it? You know, somebody sins in the church, somebody falls, somebody loses their testimony, somebody just wants to tell somebody else, they can't wait. Christians didn't ought to be like that. That's a trait of the world, not a trait of the church. Yet who hasn't been like that? You ought to watch your mouth, set a guard at your mouth. I told you before, it makes me smile, but when I spoke on the tongue at Bethany, and uh, did the study there at um, Bethany Evangelical Church years ago, Donna and I had got in the car, and we never said a word to each other all the way home for 40 minutes, because we were just thinking, you know, watching your words, what are you going to talk about? You know, it was just... We just sat in silence, we were just sort of smiling to ourselves, thinking, man, life, that was challenging. For me, you know, preaching, I'm a hypocrite, man. You've got to be careful, you've got to watch this little member in your mouth, this tongue that you cannot control. Whisperers and backbiters. What are you sowing discord for? What are you sowing problems to somebody else for? What are you going to gain out of that? And you think about it, what do you gain out of it? You listen to something, you hear something, so you pass it on and say, hey, have you heard so-and-so? What do you gain out of that? I, I've seen people rush to somebody else to tell them they want you to be first. Hey, 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 no, I'm first, I'm first. <laughs> have you heard about so-and-so? You and I ought to be convicted of this sin. If you can't say it to someone's face, don't say it at all. Yet we are all like it. It's a horrible thing. God help us be delivered from this. Whisperers, backbiters. Look at a couple of verses on this. Proverbs 11. <coughs> Proverbs 11, verse 13. A tale bearer, a tale bearer revealeth secrets. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. If somebody has told you something about somebody else, you ought to conceal the matter. What you ought to do is say, look, if it's gossip, I don't want to know. Yet we're all nosy. Isn't it funny how you, there's something in you that is... It's nosy, it just wants to know. You know, you leave a place of employment. You want to know how the place of employment... You think that because you've left, the place is going to fold. <laughs> you think that they can't cope because you were so good at your job. We'll get to boastful in a minute. You leave a church and you want to know how they're doing. And you get a kick if they're not doing particularly well. Well, I've left there now, isn't it? Aren't we like that? It's pathetic, isn't it? If you don't nod your head, I'll come and nod it for you. <laughs> You're all the same. I'm the same. It's terrible. It's a trait in us. It's horrible. God, deliver us from it. Don't be a gossip. Don't get a kick out of somebody's misfortune. Something's happened. You shouldn't want the worst for somebody. You should want the best for somebody. <laughs> come back, I'll come back to you. Know, you getting this degree and... Oh, it made me smile when that person was saying about it. So, oh, oh, how did how did Latoya do? Oh, yeah, yeah, she she got it first. Oh, that was that was good then, wasn't it? <laughs> oh dear, yeah. it's funny, isn't it? We all get a kick out of things. 
She got too one. They were, oh, shame, isn't it? You know, people are funny. Christians are the worst. People get a kick out of you being harmed. It's a strange old thing, human nature, human characters. Be nice. <laughs> be godly. Be a, act like a Christian should act. Rejoice with those that do rejoice. Weep with those that weep. So, be convicted. If this is hitting you for six while you're listening to this or reading this or these scriptures, the tale bearer revealeth secrets. If that's you, stop revealing secrets. Stop being a tale bearer. Just stop it dead. Don't do it again. And if somebody wants to say, oh, have you heard, listen, look, look I don't want to know. Just leave it. It doesn't do me any good to know. Then go on the internet and research you, see if you can find out. <laughs> ah, dear, I know what your human heart is like. How do I know? Because I've got the same one in my body. <laughs> a tale bearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit, is that you? Concealeth the matter. Crystal clear, isn't it? Great verse. Yeah, let's have another one. Proverbs 20. Let the Lord speak to us. Proverbs 20, verse 19. He that goeth about as a tale-bearer revealeth secrets, therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Don't meddle with him. Don't get involved. Don't listen. Don't give him ammunition. Don't feed off him. Don't have anything to do with the tale-bearer. Because they're just sowing discord, they're sowing problems, and they're causing problems. Leave it alone. Walk away. Tell them you don't want to know. Some of you, <laughs> some of you, you're not going to be speaking for weeks, man. You've got nothing else to say. <laughs> you go to church, hey, just sit there, read your Bible, read your Bible before the service, get your heart and life right with the Lord, sit in silence, sit in reverence, ask the Lord to speak to you as the Word of God is ministered, and then after church, edify the body of Christ somehow. Speak about the word. Tell somebody how, man, I was convicted today because, you know, this was preached or I read in the scriptures, this, this really affected me. I'm trying so hard. Hey, would you pray for me? Because I really want to get my character right with the Lord. Are you doing anything this week? If you're not, do you fancy going out tracting with me? I, I could do with a friend to go and just walk and just push a few tracks through doors. Do you fancy doing that? Do you want to meet up for a coffee? Hey, listen, I've been reading in Proverbs. This is, this is amazing, reading in Proverbs. Do you want to go for a coffee and I'll tell you all about it? Have you heard of so-and-so? Gladys Clackett, she's, a, she's only... <laughs> What's all that about? Let it go. Let me give you another one. 26.20, Proverbs 26, verse 20. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail-bearer, the strife ceaseth. You're not adding fuel to the fire. You're giving nothing to burn. You're not putting wood on the fire and wanting to you know, intensify the situation. Somebody may have gone through something. They could have messed up in their lives big time. The last thing they want is you spreading gossip about them. Isn't that correct? They could do with their help. We've all, I've told you this before, we've all done things stupid, we could have all got caught out, we could all lose our testimonies in way, we've acted terribly as a Christian, we've been so unlike the Lord most of our lives, if we're honest. Some people have got caught, some people have lost their testimony, some people have lost their family, they've lost everything. They're so-called on the scrap heap, nobody wants anything to do with them. The last thing they want is you tail-bearing to somebody else about what's happened to them. They could do with some support, some help, some counsel, some encouragement. Listen, the whole world could have cast you aside. The church could have cast you aside. Nobody wants anything to do with it. Listen, I'll stand through it. I know it's horrendous what you're going through. I'll stand with you. Wouldn't that be lovely? <laughs> church, I tell you. Church. What kind of church are you in? Yeah.
it is so difficult it seems today to find people that really care about other people selfishness has been brought out so much even this week we've seen so much selfishness among people people just putting themselves first rather than others sacrificing things in your life for other people when was the last time we did that? what have you sacrificed for somebody else? <laughs> so that is a word I'm sure that we could all relate to malignity, whisperers, backbiters the next one can't believe it but haters of God how mad is that? haters of God who on earth hates God and why? when you really think about it who on earth hates God? what kind of person are you or what kind of person do you have to be to hate God? That's the first thing I thought of, just in regard to this, haters of God. What are the deep reasons for your hatred towards God? If you're out and out saying, yes, I hate God, you know, I'm not talking about the atheist, the, you know, the foolish person, the moron who's saying, oh, there is no God, all that stuff, that kids play. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the person that says they hate God. Why? What's your root cause for saying that? I said before, you know, we can learn off every, each other. You know, we learn off each other through experience and through situations that we go through, you know, wise counsel and all kinds of things. We learn from one another. I was with a, um, uh, when I, again, I was in a sales job. I was going out with a, a driver, a delivery driver at the time, just for a little bit of experience of seeing the way the customers deal with him and vice versa. And um, talking to this guy, and he was he was probably the most foul-mouthed bloke I've ever met in my life. Every other word was a swear word. Every other word. It was incredible. They put the Christian with him. (laughs) It just had to be. Out of all the drivers, I get the worst one for swearing. And um, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Yeah. So we go out, um, start at 7 o'clock in the morning and we finish about 6 o'clock at night. Out on the road, delivering parcels, collecting parcels, and it's just for a bit of experience and just to find out leads and all this kind of stuff. So um, we start off and uh, I meet him down in the works canteen uh, before we go out in the lorry. And already they're talking about a bloke that had parked, this has happened that week, that had parked up his... Because they're all, all delivery drivers moan about how many deliveries they've got and how many collections they have. And they work really hard, don't get me wrong. You know, they're doing 50, 60 drops and pickups a day. And that's a hard graft. Plus they're, they're breaking speed limits to try and get through and try and do the job. If they can't fulfill the job, they get sacked and somebody else comes. You find, it's, a, it's a real thankless job being you know, a delivery driver. People don't realise how hard it is. So next time you get a parcel delivered or it's not on time, be a little bit sympathetic towards them. Um, you know, encourage them, have a quick chat with them. It will have to be quick because they won't be on their way. Um, and so, yeah, I go round with this guy. What was I saying then? I go round. Oh, yeah, into the canteen, yeah, thank you. And they're saying about this guy had parked up his lorry on a bridge and just jumped. Committed suicide. It happened that week, and then that we were going out. In the same firm, yeah, in the same firm, and he just committed suicide. And of course, they're joking around about it and they're making jokes about it and that. This is a guy's life, you know, he's ended his life, that's it, that's the end of his life. They're joking and mocking this. So I walk into that, and then I go out this guy who's vile mouth foul mouth bloke and so I'm sitting there and we start off the journey and um, as we're driving I'm trying to you know break down barriers trying to you know get him to talk find out a little bit about him op- you know throw a few open ended questions get him talking let's, you know let's, I'm out with him for the whole day let's just make the best out of it so anyway we start hitting all these different questions like this and he, he likes to talk, give his opinion everybody likes to give their opinion and so he was doing the same and we got into the situation with his wife who's um, 
recently, I never knew this, recently just died. And she died of cancer and he was married for years and years and years and she died in his arms. She was holding her right to the end in his arms and you could tell he was cut up about it, you could tell he was totally in love with her. You know, fantastic finish, they, you know, he was looking after her all the way to the end. Beautiful love story, fantastic. But as soon as I mentioned God or the Lord, what's the first thing he does? He blames him, the Lord, for taking his wife. And it always reminded me that, I can't remember if I said it, you know, I don't want to lie to you, I can't remember if I said it, I try to challenge him, try to show him that God loves him, loves, you know, loved his wife. But we blame God, the human race blames God for everything that goes wrong but never thanks him for all the good things. When was the last time you sat down and you thanked God, not just the Christian, the non-Christian, you thank God for the food that you have, for friendship, for family. What about, when was the last time you thanked God for your wife, for the good times you have? You, know, you, have, you could have had 20, 30, 50, 70 years of marriage with your wife. How many times did you thank the Lord for that? And yet, when she leaves, you blame God. Don't you think he gets the roughest of rough deals? It's terrible, isn't it? Haters of God. And you could see the hatred that even came out from this guy. Hating God for taking his wife. Unbelievable. So you can imagine that was quite a day. <laughs> <clears throat> what has God done to you? For you to hate him so much. Hate is such an intense word. We don't like it. Don't like using it. You know, I hate this. You know, people say, my d- dad used to pick, the, you know, pick me up on this if I say, oh, you know, uh, certain food, you know, there's mad things, but like, you know, I like most foods, I'm not exotic or anything like that, just basic food, but like, at school, I don't know what it was, but they gave you, like, you know, these torture pills called butter beans. <laughs> you know, I don't know, you may, you may like them, I don't know, but I could never get into it and, you know, they put them on the plate and you, you know, it's torture. That's what they just want to, they do it deliberately, I think, at school. But, um, and I used to say to my dad, I, you know, and he had this thing in him that he wanted you to eat them, you know. He, I think he enjoyed the torture a bit as well, you know. So I come home from school one day and I've got these butter beans on my plate. They know I don't like them. I've been complaining about them for years, you know, and then suddenly they're on plate. I said, you know, I don't want these. You know, I don't like these, you know. You know I was 34 at the time, and, uh, <laughs> no. and I said, I just don't want these. And he says, eat your butter beans, like this. Now, I hate these. He says, oh, hate's a strong word. And all. You know, what do you hate? Do not I hate those that hate thee? The scriptures say, don't they? But hate is an intense dislike or strong aversion, which means a strong dislike. So what has God done to you for you to hate him? Hatred, abhor, detest, abominate, disgust. How can you hate God? What's in you that has got you to that position, that stage in your life where you can openly say, I hate God? What on earth has caused you to say that? Do you really know what you're saying? Who do you personally know, personally know, who professes or says that they hate God? And if they do, do you really know why they say it? Why do they? hate God. In yesteryear you wouldn't find many people who would openly admit or say that they hated God, yet today it is openly proclaimed by many. We went out on the road, we had a meeting today, and um, not, not today, sorry, yesterday it was, yesterday, and at the, and we put on Radio 4, listen to the news. Cats and news, you know, <laughs> probably not worth it, but we just stuck it on. Uh, five, ten minutes, just listening. And straight away it was, there was an advert. And it came on blatant, on Radio 4, blatant. Hi, 
Satan here. And it was talking about the underworld, it was talking about um, the punishment, it was talking about the intense heat that there was down in hell, and who was in hell, having a, like, you know, the, um, a bit, bit of a party, uh, this type of thing, it was, um, you know, um, saying something towards that, I think. It was a comedy show. Talk about mocking sin, mocking God, mocking hell. It's just treated as comedy. In your face, it must have been, I don't know, 8.30 in the morning. And then as we're getting home at night, 5.30 at night, whatever, same advert again. Unbelievable. There is a hatred towards God today that has certainly intensified, that it wasn't like that all those years ago. Not in the, the mass way it is today, if you understand what I'm saying. Surely you have to have a reason or cause to hate. Who or what do you hate? You see, Jesus Christ is love personified. He is love. He is the embodiment of love. He is everything to do with love. He's the creator, the instigator of love. Yet he is hated by so many. Turn to Psalm 69. Again, preached on this a while back, Psalm 69, we said that Psalm 69 talks so much about the Lord's childhood. If you look at Psalm 69 verse 4, <clears throat> they that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. They hate the Lord so much, you know, the masses hate the Lord. They want to destroy the Lord. Yet they hate him without a cause. Don't you think that is incredible? How can somebody hate Jesus Christ? Who is love. God is love. I find it incredible. I can't explain it. It's just, it's just, you know, it's sin. I understand that, you know. But how you could get to that stage in life where you hate the Lord Jesus Christ, someone who loved you so much that he died for you, I find incredible. They can't stand the mention of his name. You talk about the Lord Jesus Christ to some people and they, are, they just can't stand it. They can't talk about it. They get so irate, they get so arrogant, they get so angry, they get ferocious just by mentioning his name. I've got people in my own family like that. I find it amazing. Look at John 15, 25. John 15, verse 25. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. What cause have you got to hate the Lord? Think of all the hatred towards God found in music. Music should be edifying, should be lovely. Yet, you have all this heavy metal, rap, you know, all this rubbish stuff today, all this modern trash today, that's out and out blasphemy. There is a hatred. There is like subliminal messages. It's attacking God. You've got people that are out and out God haters, such as, again, a lot of heavy metal bands. Um, this Marilyn Manson these antichrist so-called musicians and singers they think it's mad they haven't a clue what they're getting involved with and they're doing but what's driving them how have they let the devil control their lives in such a way that they have such a hatred towards God what have they opened themselves up to you talk about demon possession 
hatred towards God found in music, the television and film openly mocking God was it that um, Jim Carrey produces that film Bruce Almighty satanic and you get Christians that watch it watching satanic trash like this openly you know mocking God we hear it on the radio we see it in print you can go into a Waterstones um, bookshop or um, you know these bookshops out there and you can find stuff that is openly attacking God and there is a hatred towards God but why? for what reason do they hate? <clears throat> we went to a um, a creation versus evolution like um, talk didn't we two weeks ago was it two weeks ago and um, one of the questions they were asking or one of the, some guy in the um, congregation I don't think he was a believer asked do you, know, do you think there's something like sinister and like an undertone hidden agenda thank you hidden agenda um, in all of this and like the pastor who's you know decent nice chap and that who was, you know, a scientist. Um, he, he said, I don't think so, didn't he? I mean, this is a pastor, a leader of a church, he says, I don't think so. That is the maddest comment in the whole of the thing. If they don't think there's something sinister, if they don't think there's something evil, if they don't think there is a hidden agenda in this, they are mad. Where's all this hatred coming from? Where's all this stuff that is anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-the Word of God, anti-authority? Where's all this coming from? There is something hidden everywhere. We're spinning out of control. You don't think there's something hidden? You don't think there's a hidden agenda? You think it's just by accident? You're mad. You don't read your Bible. What harm has God caused these people that hate them? Has he destroyed their lives? Has he hurt them? What has he done towards them? that they hate him so much think of all the good the Lord has done for the wicked can you see, can you feel, can you touch can you taste, can you smell can you walk, can you work, can you speak God's allowed all that to happen in your life have you got any friends, God's given you friends can you eat okay God's allowed you to eat. Earn money, spend money, God's allowed that. Travel, roof over your head. Every single good thing you've got in your life has come from God, ultimately. And they hate him. Do you ever hear Allah's name, or Muhammad, <laughs> taken in vain, or used as blasphemy? I've never heard it. Ever heard anybody in a factory or in an office that when something goes wrong they use Allah's name or Muhammad's name? I've never heard it ever. Not once in my entire life. For 41 years. A young 41 year old male. I've never heard it. Have you? I've heard Jesus Christ's name taken in vain every day of my life. I heard it today at least once or twice everybody does people who aren't even you know I say Christians they're the ones but I've even heard Christians can you believe use God's name in vain that's unbelievable as well but that's another story but the people of the world using Jesus Christ's name as a blasphemy as a curse word as a swear word why? why is it always Jesus Christ's name that is used in vain, in blasphemy. People use his name so much without even knowing what they are doing. It's like automatic. It happened today, I pulled the guy up on it. Someone hates Jesus Christ so much that they've sowed his name everywhere to use as a swear word, a curse word. Do you know why? His name is used all the time as blasphemy in the world. 
because it, 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 it this, without a shadow of a doubt, proves that he is the true God. And Satan hates him. He's the true God. It doesn't happen to Allah or Confucius or Muhammad or any other false gods or religions or religious leaders. It's Jesus Christ every time. Because he is the true God. So Satan is getting his name cursed every way he possibly can. Look at Jeremiah 10.10. Jesus Christ is the true God. Jeremiah 10 verse 10. But the Lord is the true God. That means there's false gods. He is the living God. That means there's dead gods. An everlasting king. He's the king of all kings. At his wrath the earth shall tremble and the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. The Lord is the true God. He is the living God. John 17 verse 3. John 17 <clears throat> verse 3. And this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Look at the cross reference to that. 1 John 5 verse 20. 1 John 5 verse 20. And we may know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true. Even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Jesus Christ is the true God. God the Father is the true God. The Holy Spirit is the true God. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost and these three are one. One God, three separate persons. 1 John 5 verse 7. He is the true God. God begats God. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 9. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 9. 9. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Turn from idols to serve the living and true God. In our sales meeting today for our new product development with our team, they had brought in five, I think it's five statues of Buddha, Buddha's head and Buddha, whatever it is. And um, saying about, you know, what about selling these? <laughs> oh dear. So we had to tell them. Of course, if there's money. <laughs> oh dear, can you believe it as a Christian, what people want you to sell? So I said, not a chance. I said, you can. I said, you. He said, they're, <laughs> listen to what he says to me. They're only resin. They're, <laughs> they're only resin. Buddha's head, you know. They're only resin. Unbelievable, isn't it? What people buy. It's only a bit of plastic or resin to make you feel good. Put it in your garden and light some candles around it. Are you mad? Are you absolutely mad? Can you believe these long haired buffoons actually believe this stuff? Turn from idols to serve the living and true God, Jesus Christ. Buddha. Can you believe people follow this trash? Buddha. Fat little Buddha in the garden, that brings you luck, does it? Oh dear. So God, he is the true God, the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no middle ground with God. You either hate him or you love him. There's no middle ground Look at Luke 16. Luke 16. <clears throat> Isn't it interesting? You've got that buffoon in Oxford, what's his name, Dawkins, who puts on the buses, you know, there is no God. Doesn't he? He doesn't put that at all. What's he put? There probably is no God. 
He's a coward. Either there is or there isn't. <laughs> He's a coward. Oh, there the, the probably is no God, you know. But ju- just in case, we're going to put probably on the bus. You know, just in case I could be wrong, you know. Hope my good outweighs my bad, you know. <laughs> Dawkins. Oh dear, the God delusion. And people buy it. Christians buy it. Christians read it. Don't read the Bibles, but they'll read that. Oh, of course, just for you know, research and reference purposes, of course, yeah. And give him the money. Won't buy any tracks or give them out, but they'll buy the God delusion. Deluded fools. Luke 16, 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve two masters, folks. For either you will hate the one and love the other. You see, I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I love him. I hate idols and false religion that leads millions of people to hell. I hate it with a passion. Islam, I hate. Roman Catholicism, I hate. Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Christadelphia, Unitarians, double hatred. (laughs) I hate all this stuff. Bible correctors, triple hatred. I love God. But God hates as well. Some Christians are so immature and so pathetic and know nothing about the scriptures, they don't think God hates. They think God just loves all the time. They don't understand the severity, the fierceness, the wrath of God. God also hates. There's no middle ground with God. You either hate him or you love him. And a good question to ask the person who so-called hates God would be, why? Sit down, reason with me, just for a second. Sit down and tell me why you hate God. Get to the truth. Get to the root of the matter. You tell me that you hate God, I want to know why. And then tell him everything that God has done for him. Break him down. Show him how much God loves him. And find out how somebody who is a creation of God can hate his creator so much. Because I find that amazing. One more. One more. Because time is slipping away. Again, you could spend a lot of time on that, of course. Malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God. Despiteful. Interesting word, despiteful. Full of spite. Despiteful. A desire to hurt, annoy or offend. Full of spite. You see that among children. They want to hurt another child or annoy another child or annoy anyone. (laughs) Children just annoy everyone. (laughs) But I love kids, don't get me wrong. (laughs) We're having two of my own and you know, bringing them up in the admonition of the Lord. You know, I don't know what it's like to bring up kids. Me and the missus, yeah, we brought a couple of kids up, we know. (laughs) Annoy or offend. Annoy or offend. Full of spite. I wonder if there's anybody, again, you know, let's be completely honest and upfront with one another. Is there anybody in your life that you despise? Who do you despise? And why? Are you full of spite? Do you enjoy hurting people, annoying people? Offending people? Who do you want to hurt or harm? And why? Is there anyone in your church who gets a kick out of harming or hurting someone else? I've met Christians like that. 
I said you can learn off anyone. And uh, we had a girl, didn't we, who came to our um, youth group, I think. And the girl uh, said the word to you, or whatever, this Schadenfreude. I'd never even heard of it. Schadenfreude. German. <laughs> the Germans. Um, Schadenfreude. S C H A D E N F R E U D E. Schadenfreude. Four syllables. Sounds a bit more than that, doesn't it? <laughs> What's it mean? <coughs> well, it means that you get pleasure or pleasure derived from another's misfortune. That's what it means. You get a kick out of someone else who has had misfortune. And you all know what it's like if you, if you see somebody fall over, yeah, and you burst out, um, and burst out laughing. It could be terrible, yeah. You're all smiling now because you just pictured the scene where you can see somebody who, just, who has fell over and they've hurt themselves, that you have laughed because you found it funny. Now, you feel guilty afterwards for doing it, but there's something inside of you, you're, you're all smiling now, there's something inside of you that when you see, and, and the worse the fall, the more you smile at times. Yeah? A schadenfreude. It's not just me. Yeah. That's right, yeah, that, that program, you, you've been framed. Obviously, the toy watches it. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, but for us, spi- us spiritual, <laughs> us spiritual, yeah, less Christians. No, no, no. Um, yeah, you want to complain, you write to Latoya, not me. Um, no, I'm only joking. We've all seen it, haven't we? Well, if you haven't, Latoya has. No, um, <laughs> you've been framed. You can put on the internet, can't you, those of you that are secular? Um, you could put in YouTube funniest videos, you know, and see the, you know, the funny things that, you know, people falling over or falling off the bikes or this kind of stuff, you know. And um, there's some gr- no, no, yeah. We've all seen this stuff. And sometimes you can't help it, but you laugh out. You burst out laughing when you see something. That's Schadenfreude. Somebody's misfortune you get a kick out of. What's that all about? <laughs> oh dear. But going back to this word despiteful, full of spite, a couple of interesting verses again. uh, This book is amazing, right? Just all the time, you open it up, you look at the scriptures, and it just gets bigger and bigger, and it just, you think, I I never knew that was in here. You know, amazing stuff. And it's just fantastic. And this is only just doing, you know, these little studies, let alone getting, spending your life in this book would be. You know, imagine spending. Imagine if you could get paid for you know, studying the Bible for eight hours. That's what I can't understand about these pastors. They get paid and spend so little time in the Word of God. I can't believe it. In fact, that, that's, that's just oh, that's another subject. Sack them all, I'd say. Get a proper job. <laughs> Ezekiel 25 verse 15. Because I ain't doing the job properly. Thus. Thus saith the Lord God, because the Philistines have dealt by revenge and have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart. So you can have a despiteful heart to destroy it for the old hatred. Isn't that amazing? The old hatred. The despiteful heart. Well, look at Ezekiel 36 verse 5. So you've got a despiteful heart, 36 5. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Surely is the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, and against all Idumea, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. A despiteful heart, a despiteful mind, full of spite. Is your mind, your heart like that? The thought process, something comes into your mind full of spite, goes down into your heart. It's not what goes into the man, it's what comes out, yeah? What comes out of your mouth. Proceedings, murders, and it goes through all this stuff. Are you full of spite? Do you get a kick out of somebody else? Somebody else's misfortune? 
story after story after story. We could give illustration after illustration, and I could give that out my own life without even picking on anybody else. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That's what the Bible says. Jeremiah 17, 9. Don't ever rate yourself. You are nothing. You are despiteful at times, full of spite. You get a kick out of other people's misfortunes. You call yourself a Christian. Isn't it interesting? The first thing today, you know, we have a bit of a joke with that guy and, uh, and he says, oh, you, um, what's he say? Well, that's not very Christian-like. Remember that? Oh, I was saying about smashing up the Buddha heads or something. And it's something like that it was. That's not very Christian. People love to jump on it. Yeah, let them jump on it. Despiteful. Time is so annoying. It is so annoying. There's just some amazing stuff in this. And I have to wait till next time. The rapture could happen. Hmm? Sunday, yeah, we could perhaps do it um, on Sunday. We'll see how we get on, how the Lord leads on that. So we're going to pick up from Proud and Boasters next study. Let's pray.